I had this, this uh, really great opportunity because I'm going to introduce our main speaker tonight, who I had known for, I don't know how many years. 20. Lots. 20. 21. 21 ish. Something. Anyway, for, for nearly a quarter of a century, John Fritchie has served the people of the state of Illinois as state representative and the people of Cook County as one of our commissioners. I, I, you know, we got a lot of stuff to say about him, but I really want to hit the important parts, which I think many of us, many of us, uh, appreciate. Uh, he was, first of all, he was elected in 1996 at the age of 32, which is young. And uh, he was the chairman of the Consumer Protection Committee from 1999 to 2002. His efforts to rein in escalating ATM fees received national attention. Now, how many of us have gone to an ATM when you need a little cash and they're going to charge us four dollars? He helped get that tied back. Uh, he didn't re a run for re-election in 2010 for uh, the House of Representatives, but he ran for a seat on the Cook County Board of Commissioners. And uh, I want to talk about some of the things that Commissioner Fritchie has done for those of us who live in Cook County. First of all, he was the lead sponsor of the legislation to turn back the sugar tax, um, the tax and on sugar, you know, sugar things, you know. Everybody's caring a lot about that, that we have to pay uh, the 20 cents on a 20 ounce bottle of soda or something. He's the leader of that. And that has been rescinded, it's been back, and that's, this is the guy who will help us all. He also did the property tax and sales tax freezes in uh, 20... What's to say 2020? I'm ahead of my time. Oh, you're ahead of your time. Okay, so are my notes. And for a morning. But long, long story short, he, uh, he wants to uh, hold property tax, sales tax, and make sure that we have more money in our own pockets instead of just giving it to county government. And uh, he also supported the consolidation of the recorder of deeds and the county clerk. This is important because the recorder of deeds has all of these employees that you know, it's costly. And what does the recorder of deeds do? Record stuff. So the clerk can do it easily, and we don't, um, you know, we don't have to spend so much money. Uh, parental leave reform. John's legislation to update the county's parental leave policy allows new mothers and fathers to claim disability in order to receive paid parental leave. So they can, you know, and paid sick leave, and sweatshop free procurement that the county uh, prevents any, uh, any county contract from acquiring goods and services from a sweatshop. I think that benefits us all and it's, it's you know, phenomenal. Um, and government transparency and bail bond reform. I think bail bond reform is important. Oh, and we, this is, these are true. Someone steals a candy bar from Woolworths. We don't have Woolworths anymore. I just, I just, I, I kind of throw that in because that's what I think of. But if somebody steals a candy bar or a sandwich and they get arrested and they go to Cook County Jail and they have $10,000 bond, or $5,000 bond. Now, if you are stealing a sandwich or some food from a, a store, you're going to have money to bond out. Now, this is where this is where it comes into all of us: is that everybody who can't bond out for these minor petty offenses are in the Cook County Jail at the rate of $143 a day. 
So Commissioner Fritchie understands that these people should not be in, in prison for, they, they can't come up with 100 bucks to get them out. And he's also for common sense marijuana policies. During his tenure in the legislature, John co-sponsored the bill that created Illinois' recently enacted medical cannabis program. So people who are sick, people who are dying, people who need help, he has allowed that to happen. And now this is this is my final thing. And my boy Baxter appreciates the commissioner because he has been a leader on animal welfare in our county. And he is, you, he's trying to stop the puppy mills. He wants to make sure that the, uh, what, what do we call that, the Cook County, uh, where, where they take them? animal control. Cook County Animal Control treats those animals with dignity and respect. So from my point of view, he not only should get the same, well, he has had the same uh, Joseph Award, he needs to have the same Francis Award. So, long story short, and because of all those things I mentioned, uh, the bishop awarded him in the past of the uh, St. Joseph Award, and uh, he, he, he incorporates all the stuff that many of us of belief and hold. So, I'd like to introduce you to Commissioner John Fritchie. Hi. Okay, so here's the good news is I'm not going to give a political speech. Uh, <laughs> Bad news is, I think, uh, it's more interesting than anything else. Um, I don't write speeches in advance. I don't plan my comments because I think you just want to give a sense of why people are here. Um, and I try to give a sense of a little bit of who I am and my thoughts on various issues. Uh, as Rick said, I've known Rick for 20 some odd years. Uh, we worked on legislation. Uh, we actually worked on Hospital 101 at the time, which was really to provide human rights and human dignity to homosexual individuals who live here. I serve with a state rep named Larry McKeon. He was the first openly gay state representative. But at that time, he could have been denied a hotel room in Springfield, a bank account in Springfield, and we tried to pass legislation, and we couldn't do it. And it was a shocking time. And look, I believe this crowd is a loving, religious, open, welcoming crowd. And so you see the progress that we've made. So when Rick talks about the things that I've worked on, I don't care whether it's consumer protection, I don't care whether, when I say I don't care, whether it's consumer protection, whether it's things like animal welfare, whether it's things like making sure that people can stay in their home because they're taxes. There's a common thing. The common thing is trying to look out for all of us. Because all of us have a commonality on some level. There is something that you care about. There is something that is dear to you that is going to be common with everybody in this room somehow. And you need to step back and think about that. We live not in unprecedented times. We live in times that this world has seen before. We actually live in a very hateful, divided time right now. Uh, it's not my intention to get into a diatribe about what's going on in Washington, D.C. But what's going on in Washington is a reflection of what you're seeing throughout the country. Hate is being emboldened. Bigotry is being emboldened. People feel that it's okay now for them to be open about these hostile feelings. Now is the time that we need to realize what's important to us. What do we care about? What do we care about? We care about our family. We care about ourselves. We care about our neighborhood. We want to make sure we have safe schools. We want to make sure that there's compassion for people. When Rick was talking about uh, bail bond reform. This is, you know, some people will say, well, you're trying to protect criminals. No, no, no. We're trying to have common sense of justice with them. 
So we've taken the average daily population in Cook County Jail since I've been there from about 10,000 people a day to about 7,000 people a day. And what's interesting is the cost right now to house somebody in Cook County Jail is $150 a day. And the example he gave you really wasn't that far off base. I've sat in bond court. I've watched an old man who stole six bars of soap get held in jail because they said bond two thousand dollars. He had to post two hundred. Do you think he would have two? He'd be silly soap if he had two hundred dollars to spend. Of course not. Bond was supposed to be. Are you a risk to society? Is there a chance you're going to go and hurt somebody? Are you a flight risk? Are you going to leave and we're never going to find you? It wasn't supposed to be a test of are you rich or are you poor. I'll give you a quick fact on the jail tonight that wasn't the main thrust of this. About 80 plus percent of people that are in Cook County Jail are there for non-violent crimes. About 90 percent of them are not inmates. They're detainees. They're awaiting trial. It costs us $150 a day for us to keep them there. Do you know what's cheaper? Drug treatment, mental health therapy, electronic monitoring, job training, day reporting. But we're not doing these things enough. And it goes back to my bigger message. We need to think about where we're going as, as a society. It doesn't matter how you feel on a particular issue. Talked about legalization of recreational marijuana. You may support it, you may not, I can give you arguments, but we need to see where we are as a society. When we talk about medicinal marijuana, you know, this is something that we've bought for, for over a decade, and it's helping a lot of people. I have seen people who are in chronic pain, who are having very difficult aspects with very different diseases. This helps them. So it's not a question of how you feel about medical marijuana, it's how you feel about helping people that have no other road to go to. Again, bigger picture though, we are getting pitted. Rich against poor, black against white, straight against gay, whatever it may be, we've got to come together. I'm not here to preach. My goodness, I'm here. There's people who are far more qualified to preach than I am. Um, but I was honored to get here. I've had the opportunity to speak here before. I don't want to. I don't want to speak to you. I'd like to speak with you. I'd like you to leave this saying, well, you know, I'm not really sure what he said. But I am going to take some time to think about how I look at myself, how I look at my neighbors, how I look at people who don't look like me, who don't associate with me. They may not live in my neighborhood. They may not believe the same things that I believe. At the end of the day, there's going to be a common thread. My mom's from Morocco. She came here with my mother was actually in the U.S. Air Force. I was born in an Air Force base in Louisiana. My dad left us when I was one. I lived in a trailer park in Florida. My mom stayed in this country to give me an opportunity in education. I felt that I owed something back. She was a divorced mother. She was a Moroccan immigrant in the 60s. How do you think that was received? But you know what? She persevered. A lot of people have persevered, and we've made progress. So I know when I when I say I come from nothing, I don't mean that. I used to say that, like I came from nothing. I didn't come from nothing. I came from humble roots with somebody who was going to give me an opportunity. I went through school on hardship scholarship. I wasn't ashamed of that. I was blessed to have that. I had a good education. I went to a good school for undergrad, I went to a good law school, and I owed something back. I owed something back, and I went beyond owing something back, and said, you know what, I've got a platform now. I can do things and people will listen. I can do things and I can help people. I can change people's lives. I can make them think about their lives. But here, if I was in Cook County Commissioner, let's be candid, the last time I did this, I was state representative. If I was some guy just off the street, I wouldn't be here. I have the opportunity to be here and share with you and make you think to say, what do we want for ourselves? For yourself personally, what do you want for your family? What do you want for your society, for your city, your county, your country? Where are we going? We are at a very scary time in my opinion. When you look at these funding issues at the state level, it's funding questions such as, 
Do we make sure that seniors can get access to meals in their home? Or do we give tax breaks to people that don't know how to spend their money already because they have so much of it? I don't know where you fit in that picture, but you know what? Everybody fits somewhere on the spectrum. We are in a situation now where you are seeing mosques being attacked because of ignorance and hatred and bigotry that's being spurred from the highest levels of government. You have to decide now where do you want to live. I have a daughter. Uh, as the people that know me know my daughter's the most important thing in the world to me. She's 21. I've watched her grow up. She needs everything to me. I worry about even as 20 at 21 as I did when she was two. What kind of society is she going to grow up in? We are in dangerous times internationally for where we are as a country and for how we accept each other. You are all here for a reason. You didn't stumble into this room by accident. You're here because there are some shared beliefs that are respect for other people here. And that, that's what brings you together. So I don't want to ramble on, I truly don't. But I really do, it's this. Whether you listen to what I say, whether, as you said, you know, of substance, when you leave, at some point, while you're sitting here on the drive home, when you're laying in bed getting ready to go to sleep, how do you feel about the world? What can you do to change your little circle? How you feel about yourself, how you take care of yourself, your family, what do you do with your co-workers? You know, are you helping us come together? Are you doing things to ignore people? You know, there's a very common saying that you know, every is, maybe that's a hint, uh, you know, that every person you see has their own struggles, and they do have their own struggles. I've had my own struggles, and they're difficult, because when I have struggles, a lot of times, they become public. But behind closed doors, when you're by yourself, you have struggles, you have issues that you're thinking about. So think about this. Think about what you can do. Think about, more importantly, other people and what they may be facing. Can you help them? Little things. I, you know, I compliment people a lot. My girlfriend will tell me, she said, you know, you compliment almost everybody you see. Because you know what? It's a little thing like that that can make somebody's day. You can do such small things to make a difference. And these small things add up. You know, you look at the group of people here. We have a diverse group that knows a diverse group of friends that work with a diverse group of people. Think about that. This is what society is at the end of the day. We have an opportunity. I'm honored, truly. I don't know. How honored am I? It's probably the second time I've been in Elmer's. I don't know if I would have come out here, but for the picture. Um, no, but seriously, I'm honored to have the opportunity to do this and just say, people, please, love yourselves. Understand that you're going to have struggles. Some days are going to be harder than others. But we have these struggles. There are people there for you. My dad committed suicide three years ago. Everybody has struggles. Recognize your own. Recognize that other people do what you know that they're there or not. And see what you can do to help them, to help yourself, to help our families, to help our neighborhoods. That's all. I don't have a political message for you. That's not why I was here. That's not what I intended to do. But when I walked in the room and I looked around, I was talking to Bishop, I was talking to Rick, and I thought, you know, this is the message I want to walk away with. Love yourselves. Hard times, good times. Appreciate the good times. We were talking about it at our table. I'm having a hip replacement next week. If you sit with me, I'm going to complain to you about 20 different things. And everybody has something to complain about. It's the days that you don't step back and recognize that. Some of you know that you're sitting at lunch and say, you know what? I'm having a good day. I'm healthy. The people I love are happy. Things are going well. We don't step back to appreciate those days. Do that. It'll make a big difference to all of you. So I'm done. I know I'm going to repeat myself. It really is an important and a heartfelt message. I'm privileged to be here. I'm happy you all took time out of your lives to come out and do this. These are the types of things they add up and they make a difference in our society. 
God bless all of you. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, sir. See, I know why I love this guy.